Well hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to the channel, hope you're all well. In this video I'm going after a pair of Galaxies, Messier 81 and 82, also known as Boards and the Cigar Galaxy. But before I even attempt to do that, I've got to put my mount back together. I decided to give it a bit of a tune up, new bearings, grease etc, a bit of a clean up. And hopefully get it back together before tonight's image session. So, no time like the present, let's crack on. I'll catch up with you very soon. all put back together seems to be working fine <laughs> we'll see won't we anyway i just want to say it's glorious weather i think i might relax and pull up a chair and sit in the garden for a bit hmm what a treat anyway let's get this camera put on a tripod and i'll show you what the score is hopefully you can see this okay now i wish i'd done some before footage actually and you could have actually seen how stiff this mount was before I tuned it up. I mean, I'm not joking when I was spinning it, it was almost like a like a sudden stop halfway around. It was awful, really, really groggy. However, hopefully this is evident when I start pushing this around, how smooth that actually is. I'm literally, I actually touched that. I mean, it's, it just glides. And I have to be really careful how hard I push it actually, because it just, it keeps going. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant over the moon so i want to give a massive shout out to glenn clowder actually um, also known as the astro bloke and i'm going to leave a link in the description of the video that i followed from his channel really really helpful video if you own an eq6r pro and you're thinking of doing a tune-up i definitely recommend it it's definitely worth the effort it takes a few hours but you know it's, it's relatively straightforward so thank you very much if you're watching glenn i hope you are absolutely brilliant video Thanks a bunch. So hopefully, I'm going to get some better guiding. Of course, we'll start find out tonight. I'm imagining I'm going to get a few dramas with the guiding because I've dismantled everything. So astrophotography would not be astrophotography without a few problems. You know, but hopefully, we'll get through them and uh, have a cracking night. Hello, you. Hello. Hello. You come up to see what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> So I've got a bit of time to spare now and I'm also ready to go for tonight's activities. I'll talk a little bit more about the target later on in the video and also I want to talk about the little PC upgrade that I've done as well. Um, I think you might find interesting. Hello. Well, I'm nearly ready to go. There's been no issues so far, of course, yet to 
test the guiding out. Well, pull aligned, got that total error under 10. I didn't need to get that low. It was just, I think, a bit of luck, to be honest. Um, it was quite a bit out, which was to be expected being off the mountain. So I'm gonna slew to the target. Uh, so I've got, I'm gonna go to image management here. Go up to auto run and I've already got a light frame saved in there and that's because I've been gathering data on this target already. I'm not entirely sure how much data I've got. It's definitely over 15 hours up. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to and the rig should start moving behind me. Yeah, I was wondering if it was gonna ask that. So it's in, there is a slight deviation. So I'm just gonna to go to adjust, see what the score is. It might need rotating. <laughs> to be honest, there's not much in it. I don't even know whether I should bother. Yeah, why not? I'll do, I'm trying to work out which way the scope needs to go. I might have just made that slightly worse. I really need to get an auto rotator, to be honest. Um, actually, you know, that's good. Good to go. Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to set the guiding away. Now we're on target. No doubt this is going to probably want to calibrate itself. That's fair enough. I'm going to set the sequence up here. Um, going to light frames. I'm not going to do 300 seconds, like it says there, which is five minutes. I'm going to go down to, I don't want to do any more than three minutes. So 180 seconds. And I'm trying to work out how many I want to do here. Now I know the forecast is not good. So I'm going to go for 80 subs. If it's still clear by then, I'll, I might try and push another hour out, but we'll, we'll just, I suppose, see what happens. Ready to set it away. So I'm going to do exactly that. So I'm going to let it do its thing. I'll maybe monitor it for a little bit, 20 minutes or so. Well, everything appears to be running okay. <laughs> Guidance looking good, at least. Uh, there is something going on with the rig. I'm not quite sure what the issue is. It might be a small issue, big issue, I'm not sure. But um, I'm going to have to address it uh, and let you know in due course what that is. I'm not going to share it in the details in this video, but I'll have to do a bit of problem solving. Anyway, uh, so PC upgrade. So my old PC wasn't a slouch, to be honest. It was quite fast. Um, however, it, when I started adding the likes of Pixen Sight into the mix, Notice it was starting to get slower, and when I've started to gather more and more data, a lot more hours, more stacking, more pressure on the system, and my old PC was starting to show its cracks. It was really struggling. A um, bit of context, I uh, stacked 14 hours of data, and it took about an hour and 20 minutes, just over, uh, where the new upgrade took only 20. So quite a significant improvement, I would say. Anyway, let's jump over and show you what I've done. Well, here she is. Very bright, bit of a disco going on. I'm a big fan of the gaming looking type PCs. Uh, not everyone's a cup of tea, of course. Doesn't make your PC any faster, but yep, I like it. So what have I done? Let's get a bit of a close up here. So start with the motherboard, I've upgraded that. This here is the Asus ROG Strix 850 dash here. Dash here, I mean, it's white, got the white profile, very nice, nice and tidy. Upgraded the RAM, so the old system was running off DDR4, this is DDR5. Uh, both this and the old system had 64 gig of RAM, but the difference is the DDR5, you can get more speed out of it, it's uh, a lot faster. Uh, upgraded the CPU, so this is, it's got the i9 16 core, it's the AMD Ryzen 9950X. Apparently it's quite a good processor. And also upgraded the cooling system. Uh, it's water cooled. The old system is also water cooled. However, it had a smaller radiator with only two fans. And of course you can see this is bigger radiator with three fans. And that was very nice, very tidy, love it. So also at some point I'm going to upgrade the graphics card. This one's quite fine. You know, I think they'll last another year or two. Uh, but it's on the agenda to get that upgraded. So, I know I was talking a little techie there, and to be honest, I don't know everything about computers. In fact, most of the stuff I've no clue what I'm talking about. I'm not a subject matter expert whatsoever. But, you know, I've got by. Uh, everything I've learned has been over the last few weeks, to be honest. So, everything that I've upgraded on this PC, I'm going to leave links in the description. I've got everything from Amazon, so if you want to go check them out, if you're interested, 
you can do so at your own leisure. So, enough waffle on for now. I'm going to get my head down because I'm quite tired. I'm going to get a couple of hours and I think I'll pick up the rest of this video tomorrow when I'm a bit more fresh faced. I last captured these galaxies back in November of 2021, so it's nearly been three and a half years since I last captured them. And since then, I have improved in my imaging and processing techniques, so I am quite hopeful that the final image is going to be quite an improvement. The equipment I used to capture this image was my Canon 77D, which is a cropped center DSLR camera, my Zenith Star 61 from William Optics, which is a small refractor telescope, and these were mounted on the Star Adventurer Pro from Skywatcher, which is a small star tracker mount. Both these galaxies have similar distances from Earth and takes light around 12 million years to reach us. That is some distance. M81 or Bode's Galaxy is a grand design galaxy where M82 is an irregular starburst galaxy, meaning it's undergoing an exceptionally high rate of star formation. So there's quite a lot going on there. These, in my opinion, stunning pair of deep sky objects are part of the M81 group of galaxies and from Earth can be viewed here in the constellation Ursa Major. Currently stacking all the data as we speak. Last night wasn't the greatest of image sessions. Uh, the clouds did rock up as promised. Uh, so I've got three hours of data. I mean, it's not a big issue this time of year. I've, I've probably I've lost two hours. You know, it was going to start getting light anyway. Uh, uh, the total integration time is now, I've just totted it up at around 22 hours. So a nice chunk of data to play with today. Of course, big reveal at the end. So just for information, and most of the data that I've captured has been just using an IR cut filter. However, in my last two image sessions, I've decided to put in my Optolon L Pro, which is a broadband filter. So I'm going to draw a video to an end. If you're watching at this point thank you so much for sticking with it hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please give it a thumbs up it's going to let the youtube algorithm know that you know it's a popular video and it try and push it out a bit further it also gives me a little indicator as well that you've enjoyed it if you also consider subscribing to the channel that would be awesome please and to my current subscribers thank you so much for your continued support to the channel truly does mean a lot you know i do appreciate it and i'm not just saying that I really do and on that note till next time take care everyone clear skies and bye for now